and hello everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about fully dynamic group encryption, message filtering, and code-based instantiation. And it's a joint work with Kuai Yuan, Yuhanna Safarinani, Willis Susila, Hua Xiong Wang, and Yan Hongxu. And so first, I will recall some background on group encryption and discuss the limitations and our motivation. Then I will state our three contributions, uh, fully dynamic group encryption, message filtering, and a code-based instantiation. Besides, I will uh, describe the techniques uh, last in summary. So let me start with group encryption. Group encryption was introduced by Kianis, Sionis, and Yong in 2007. Uh, it is the encryption analog of group signatures. And there are four parties involved, the sender, the receiver, and the group manager who manages a group of receivers, and also there is an opening authority uh, who is capable of identifying the recipient of the ciphertext. And group encryption allows sender verifiably encrypts messages and to a certified group members uh, while keeping the anonymity of the receiver. Uh, more formally, group encryption allows encrypting while the following holds. First, the ciphertext is well formed and can be decrypted by some registered group members. Second, the open authority can identify the intended receiver. And third, the plaintext satisfies certain requirements, uh, such as being a witness for some public relation. Group encryption scheme have many appealing privacy-preserving applications. A natural application is for encrypted email filtering, and it allows a firewall to accept only rows incoming emails that are intended for some certified organization user. And it can also find interesting applications in uh, anonymous trusted third parties and obvious retrieval storage systems. And now let me briefly review some previous works on group encryption. And in 2007, uh, KTY introduced the model of group encryption. Um, they also provide concrete instantiation based on the number theoretical assumptions. And two years later, uh, Kettler et al. proposed a non-interactive realization based on pairings in the standard model. And subsequently, uh, Amelia and Joey, they presented a various efficiency improvements for pairing-based group encryption. And Libet et al. proposed a refined tracing mechanism and enriched the KTY model. In uh, 2017, the first construction from uh, lattice assumptions was presented by Libet et al. Uh, but so far, uh, the group encryption has been much less well studied and we aim to contribute to the development of group encryption uh, given its compelling features and nice application. Now uh, we will identify several limitations of existing group encryption schemes. First the limitation exists in uh, user revocation. The KTY model, uh, they allow the dynamic enrollments of new users to the group but uh, it does not provide any mechanism to prevent revoked users from decrypting new ciphertext intended for them. Uh, even though these uh, revoked users were expelled uh, from some misbehaviors or uh, just they uh, already um, retired from the organization. So uh, formal treatment of fully dynamic group encryption is fully desirable. The second limitation is about the usefulness of existing group encryption in the context of email filtering, and which we have mentioned as the most natural uh, application. And in all known instantiation of group encryption, the relations for message are defined according to the computationally hard problems. Uh, for example, the discrete log relation is implied in KTY uh, model for message filtering. And this treatment fit the definition of group encryption, but in our real life, it is hard to sample the witness, satisfy the relation. So <clears throat> can we design group encryption with expressive policies instead of using some uh, hard problem? And third, uh, regarding the diversity of concrete computational assumptions uh, used in constructing group encryptions, uh, among all existing schemes, the only one that is known to be quantum resistant uh, is the lattice-based construction from Libet et al. And this raised the question of uh, realizing group encryp 
encryption uh, based on alternative quantum resistance assumptions, and such as can we uh, construct code-based group encryption scheme. So in our work, we have three contributions. Uh, first, uh, the formalization of fully dynamic group encryption. And second, we realize message filtering with two expressive policies. And third, uh, we can share the first code-based group encryption scheme that follows our fully dynamic group encryption model and support both of the two message filtering policies. Now I will go to the first contribution, uh, fully dynamic group encryption. Fully dynamic group encryption is an uh, encryption analog to the fully dynamic group signatures. Uh, as for the fully dynamicity, uh, this means the user has flexibility in joining and leaving the groups uh, at the choice of group manager. And also the group manager can update the group uh, periodically to reflect user revocation. And now I will briefly introduce the model of fully dynamic group encryption. And first, the Open Authority and the group manager uh, run set up algorithm to produce their own uh, public and secret key pair. Uh, in this drawing and issue, uh, this is an interactive protocol securely run uh, between the user and the group manager. And the user can obtain its uh, own public key and secret key and the group manager updates the group information. Uh, since our model enables the group manager to remove some users from the group through a group updating algorithm, so in this updating algorithm, the group manager can advance the approach and update the group information. Uh, the sender can encrypt the witness W for its chosen uh, users in this encryption uh, uh, algorithm. So this is proof and the verification. As the proof algorithm is run by a sender who acts as a prover and demonstrates the honest computation of the ciphertext. And this verification algorithm is run by any verifier to check if the proof is valid. And then the user can decrypt the ciphertext to get the messages and the uh, open authority can un-anonymize un the ciphertext in the open air operation. And <clears throat> we also define three security notions, message secrecy, anonymity in CCA2 SAMs, and soundness. And all these uh, three notions are carefully extended from the KTY model. Uh, message secrecy protects the appointed uh, receiver from a malicious adversary who tries to extract the information about the encrypted messages. And the adversary can fully <coughs> corrupt the group manager and open authority. Uh, CCA2, uh, no, uh, anonymity in CCA2 says this aims to prevent the adversary from learning information about the identity of the receiver. And also the adversary can fully corrupt uh, group manager and we have an honest uh, open authority. As for soundness, uh, soundness protects the verifier from accepting a ciphertext that either does not have the required structure or cannot be decrypted by a registered group member, and only partial corruption of uh, open authority here. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about our second contribution, uh, message filtering. And our goal is to equip group encryption skin with some basic yet commonly used policies for uh, filtering. So more precisely, we consider a public list S with S1 to SK of K binary keywords. And each of them uh, has bit length T. And we need to test against the length T substrings of the encrypted message W. Uh, by the way, the public list S can be regularly updated by the group manager depending on the interests or the needs of the organization. And the keywords SI could either be some uh, good keywords or bad ones. Then we will define two policies, uh, permissive and uh, prohibitive. So in the permissive policies, we accept uh, the message W if it contains some good keywords. Uh, informally, um, 
This means there exists some i such that the keywords as i uh, is a substring of the message w. Uh, all the uh, messages that do not contain any of these keywords are rejected. So, and uh, in the prohibited policy, uh, we accept the message w if it is far from some back keywords. And uh, in formal words, uh, this means for every length t substring y of w, and for every keyword si, uh, their humming uh, their humming distance is at least d. Here, the keyword si uh, could correspond to some topics that are illegal or simply out of the group's interest. Yeah, and also I, I will uh, explain the minimum humming distance d here uh, is to address spammers who might slightly change uh, si so that it passes the filtering while still being somewhat readable. Yeah. So now. Uh, now let me introduce our techniques regarding to these two policies. Uh, regarding the permissive policy, uh, we need to prove that there exists uh, i such that si is a substring of w. Uh, first, uh, we form a matrix uh, capital W here whose column are length t uh, substrings of the message. And then we form matrix S whose column are all the keywords si. Here we have s1 to sk. Uh, then we will prove that w is uh, legitimate if and only if they exist a uh, column uh, wi and uh, keywords sj such that wi equal to sj. Then this means the message uh, w contains some good keywords. This is equivalent to proof Mm, that they exist with one vectors g and h such that w times vector g equal to s times uh, vector h uh, then in order to handle this relation we will employ uh, stance or uh, permutating techniques to prove knowledge of such a uh, vector g, g and h and then adapt liberty at all techniques uh, for proving the well formness of the quadratic term uh, the matrix uh, W times vector G. Here, uh, W is secret and G is a secret. Uh, we follow the zero knowledge for quadratic relation uh, A times R for secret matrix A times secret vector R with some uh, constraint. Uh, after we introduce the techniques for permissive policy, then we go, a go ahead to uh, techniques for prohibitive policy. Uh, as for prohibitive policy, we need to prove for every length t substring y of w and every keywords si, uh, their humming distance is at least d. So we can see the all pairs uh, of wi and sj, and and to prove that all the sums, the sums of them, uh, we got we get z here have a uh, humming weight at least d. And to prove this statement. We adapt techniques in link and all, and uh, we will prove that uh, perform an extension tricks here. First, we append uh, t minus d coordinates to the vector z, and we get z star. This or uh, z star with length two t minus d and humming weight to be exactly t here. Then we have z star with weight t. Uh, the original vector z must have weight at least. Uh, t minus t minus d here since we append t minus d coordinates here at this point it satisfy uh, to use stance permutating technique for proving knowledge of uh, fixed weight binary vectors then follow the model of fully dynamic group encryption and the policies uh, we just mentioned uh, we can uh, have a code based instantiation uh, then to design a sa scheme satisfying uh, our model of fully dynamic group encryption, uh, we have a modular design. Then we need three uh, ingredients here. The first ingredient is an anonymous CCA2 secure public key encryption uh, scheme. Uh, we need it to encrypt the messages under the user public key. And we will uh, encrypt the public key under the open authorities public key. The second ingredient is a secure digital signature uh, to verify the public keys of group members. 
and third, uh, we need a good uh, zero knowledge proof compatible with the encryption and signature layer and as well as with the message filtering layer. And we will adapt the modular design to uh, the code base setting. So the first gradient uh, in code base setting, we can obtain from, uh, we use the randomized MacAlis encryption skin and the non yung transformation. And the second ingredient, uh, the secure uh, digital signature, this one seemed uh, not readily available as the code base signatures with efficient zero knowledge argument are not known to date. Uh, to tackle this issue, we replaced the signature scheme by an accumulator scheme equipped with zero knowledge argument of membership. And the third ingredient, uh, we use the zero knowledge argument within Stan's framework. Now, I will introduce the main idea of our code base fully dynamic group encryption. Uh, at first step, uh, when a user requests to join the group, it generates its own public key and secret key. And then the user sends his public key and a non zero hash value D to group manager. And here we use uh, the macro tree accumulator to certify his uh, public key and get the non zero hash value D here. Second, the group manager uh, first encrypts random messages under the user's uh, encryption key and to show that the user's encryption key are valid. So if the user correctly decrypted, then the group manager computes the macro tree root well or uh, all leaf nodes are the uh, all the hash value of all users D. Uh, in our fully dynamic uh, group impression, uh, in order to uh, achieve the fully dynamicity, we will follow the updating algorithm in Lin at all. So let me explain how uh, user rotation and the dynamic user enrollment can be done in a simple manner um, based on this efficiently updatable accumulator. So at the setup phase, all leaves in the tree are set as zero. And when a new user joins the group, uh, then this zero is changed to the uh, non-zero hash value D of the user. And if the user is later revoked from the group, then the value is set back to zero. And for each change, uh, the group manager can efficiently update the, the tree by recomputing the paths in time uh, big O log n. And then when sender sending a message W satisfying the permissive or prohibitive policies to user J, the sender uses uh, the public key to encrypt the message and uses the open authority's public key to encrypt the identity of J. Uh, as for willfulness of ciphertext, uh, sender uh, needs to prove in zero knowledge that uh, the message W satisfies the given policy and the uh, uh, ciphertext of the uh, identity is an honestly computed ciphertext of J and CW is a correct ciphertext of W and it computed under some hidden public key and whose hash value uh, D is not zero at the tree leaf corresponding to uh, Z J. And I will now introduce the main difficulty uh, in our con construction. And here uh, we know uh, CW has the form of uh, PK times RW plus E. So it would require to prove a um, learning parity with noise like relation with hidden but certified matrix PK uh, to well formed encryption randomness R and E and a secret uh, messages W, uh, which satisfies some relations. Uh, so we will adapt techniques from Libet et al. Uh, and follow the zero knowledge argument for uh, A times R plus E for secret matrix A, secret vector R, and some small weight E. Now we are able to uh, obtain the first construction of code base fully dynamic group encryption. So in comparison with the only known group encryption scheme from post-quantum assumptions uh, from the Libet et al. And ours is more efficient. And the main reason is uh, we use a uh, tree 
uh, which can be viewed as a weak form of signature. Uh, however, uh, it is still not practical uh, due to the involvement of heavy zero-knowledge argument. Then there is an uh, interesting open question. So can we construct practically usable fully dynamic group encryption scheme from post-quantum assumptions? Uh, last uh, is summary. So we give a formalization of fully dynamic group encryption. We realize two basic and commonly used policies for message filtering, and we construct the first code-based group encryption. So and thank you for listening.